Alright, today we're going to model some exterior walls. So here I am in my ground floor plan. You can see I've referenced in a structural model and we're going to use that structural model as the basis for locating our exterior walls. So my first step is going to be to go to my home tab and choose my wall tool. In my type selector I'm going to choose a brick with 8 inch stud from the template and I'm going to zoom in. Now I want to choose pick lines on the modify tab under place wall. That's going to be the method that we use to draw the location of our wall. And I'm going to tell Revit that I want it to locate the exterior face of my core on the edge of the slab. In other words, I want to allow the veneer to pass in front of the slab. So now I'm going to put my cursor over the edge of the slab and I'm going to hit tab until it highlights the entire slab edge. And then I'm going to click once. And it places my wall. But you'll notice it placed it with the veneer inward instead of outward. That's okay. I'm just going to hit escape twice until I am in my modify tool. And I'm going to place my cursor over one of the walls and say select all instances visible in view and it'll select all the walls. I'm going to hit spacebar and it'll flip the orientation of the wall and it will align the exterior face of the stud with the edge of the slab. All right, let's look at that in 3D. The height of the wall, if I click on one of the walls, you can come over here to the Properties tab and you see that the height has just been given a random unconnected height of 20. Well, I want all of my walls to go up to the fourth floor. So I'm going to right click on them, choose Select All Instances Visible in View, and I'm going to say, the, my top constraint is level 4. Now we're going to make some changes. I want to show you how we can actually go in and change the makeup of the exterior wall. So I'm going to click on one of the walls. I'm going to go to Edit Type. And I'm going to duplicate that type. And let's say I'm going to make a brick with 6 inch stud instead of 8 inch stud. And I'm going to hit OK. Then on the first line of the parameters you see structure. I'm going to click on edit and what you see here is actually a list of all of the layers in that wall starting from the exterior and moving toward the interior. So the first layer on the exterior is obviously three and five eighths inch thick layer of masonry, brick. Then they've got a two inch cavity space, uh, an air barrier, then a wood sheathing, three quarter inch thick. Then you see two gray lines. These gray lines define the boundary of the structural core of the wall. So obviously with a cavity wall, a typical cavity wall, your structural core is the stud. So the only item inside the structural core you see is an 8 inch metal stud layer. Well, remember I renamed this, this wall type and I called it a 6 inch uh, metal stud. Now another thing, you'll see they put a vapor moisture barrier on the interior of the studs. Well that might be common for uh, the northern states, but in the south we typically put our vapor and moisture barrier on the exterior face of the stud. So what I'm going to do is use the up button down here and move that to the exterior of my wood sheathing. And I'm going to hit OK and accept these changes. Now it only changed this wall. If I click this wall you'll still see that it's brick with 8 inch stud. I'm going to go ahead and right click on that choose select all instances visible in view and I'm going to assign all of them my new 6 inch stud wall type. Well obviously we all know that exterior walls 
uh, are not usually this plain. So let's talk about how to put some openings in that exterior wall. I'm going to go back to my plan view. And I'm going to place some openings in the corners. I'm going to go to my Home tab window tool. I'm going to place some uh, fixed windows that are three feet by six feet. I'm just going to place four. You'll notice it places the actual glazing on the side of the wall where your cursor is. So if my cursor is close to the interior of the wall, it's going to place the glazing on the interior. Well, that's obviously not what I want. I want to locate the glazing on the exterior, so I'm going to select the two that it placed incorrectly, and I just hit spacebar, and it flips them. Also, you'll notice that I had the Tag on Placement tool selected. Well, I don't want these windows to be tagged, so I'm going to go ahead and select all the tags and delete them. And if I don't want them to be tagged, when I select the tool to place them, I'm going to uncheck Tag on Placement. Okay, now I'm going to come back and fix the spacing of my windows. I want it to be a nice clean dimension of 5 feet, so I'm just going to select my temporary dimensions. Now remember, you always want to select the object that you want to move. I have just set this one correctly, so now I want to move this one, so I select it and I change its temporary dimension to 5 feet, and I'm going to do the same for this object, 5 feet. Okay, so now I have a series of windows that are placed at 5 feet on center. I'm going to go back and look at that in 3D. And there are my windows. I'm going to go ahead and select all of those. Visible in view. I'm going to hit Control C to copy them. And now I'm going to use my Paste tool on the Modify tab and choose Aligned to Selected Levels, and I'm going to go ahead and place these on Levels 2 and 3 as well. And there you have it. Well, another thing we know about exterior walls is that they're not always made of one particular type of material. Oftentimes we'll have a water table along the base of a wall on the exterior. So how would we model that? We're going to create a new wall type. I'm going to go back to my wall tool. I'm going to pull down, and you see my uh, template has a lot of basic walls. What we want to create is a stacked wall. So we're going to choose the only stacked wall that's in our template. Now you can see it actually put CMU down at the base with brick above. Let's see how that worked. I'm going to click on it and choose Edit Type. And there's only one parameter in a stacked wall, and that's Structure. I'm going to hit Structure, Edit Structure. And you can see a stacked wall is very similar to a regular wall, except its layers are vertical. Instead of being layers of a wall from exterior to inside to interior, its layers are from top to base. So. That's how a stacked wall works. Let's make this stacked wall more realistic. First of all, I want to make sure that I have all the ingredients that I need to make the stacked wall what I want it to be. I want my base to be stone. So I'm going to go back to my wall tool. I'm going to choose a basic wall, like the one we made earlier. And I'm going to say Edit Type. I'll go uh, Duplicate, 
and I'm going to say I want an exterior wall stone with six inch stud and I'm going to edit my structure I'm going to do a couple of things. First I'm going to change the material here I'm going to pull down to masonry stone and say OK we're going to say that the thickness of our stone is actually five inches and we'll go ahead and say that the air layer the cavity is three inches just for the sake of giving the building a little bit more of a base feeling and I'm going to hit OK and OK. Now I'm going to select the stacked wall again pull down in the types and choose exterior brick CMU stud edit the type and I'm going to duplicate it and instead of CMU stud I'm going to say stone and say OK I'm going to edit my structure now I'm going to leave the wall on the top alone but for the wall on the bottom I'm going to choose the one I just created, stone with six inch stud. And I want it to be a little taller than that. Let's say four feet. And OK. And OK. Now you can see a stacked wall with brick on top of stone.